So um, Dr. Lawrence et al., who's been an expert in the field, has uh, been conducting a prospective study of patients undergoing an allogeneic transplant and looking for those who develop criteria for transplant-associated TMA. He's been looking for different biomarkers, and in the abstract that he presented in the American Society of Hematology meeting, he specifically reported on the levels of MASP2. MASP2 is the uh, enzyme that actually uh, does complement activation through the lectin pathway. What he showed is that all patients undergoing allogeneic transplant had high MASP2 levels. But interesting, the patients who developed transplant-associated uh, TMA actually had higher MASP2 levels than the controls. He also showed that patients with persistent transplant-associated TMA that did not resolve despite withdrawal of the offending agent or treatment of the infection had continued elevated levels of MASP2. What this suggests is that MAS2 may be involved in the pathogenesis of transplant-associated TMA and therefore is an appropriate target for therapeutic intervention. Rambaldi et al. presented in the European Society of Hematology a very interesting uh, preliminary results of a phase two trial of norsoplumab for patients who develop transplant-associated TMA. It was a dose escalation study, so it was a dose finding study. A total of 18 patients, of 19 patients were treated, 18 were adults that had transplant-associated TMA. What was important is that in this study, in all patients who received narsoplumib, there was at least some objective evidence of improvement in the, in the uh, evidence of transplant-associated TMA. That means that creatinine improved, LDH decreased, hemolysis and platelet counts improved. More importantly, the primary endpoint, which was 100-day survival, was significantly better for patients receiving narsoplumab versus historical controls. That's 53% versus 10%. This suggests that narsoplumab might be a very effective agent for the treatment of transplant-associated TMA or for the prevention of endothelial damage, and those are subjects of current and future studies. The inclusion criteria was to have uh, be within 30 days of transplant, have uh, criteria for transplant-associated TMA based on the standard criteria, decreased platelet counts of less than 150, doubling of creatinine, increased LDH, and presence of schistocytosis in a peripheral blood smear. The Rimbaldi trial was very important because the 100-day survival, which was the primary endpoint, was 53% for the patients treated versus 10% for a group of historical controls. We need to remember that currently there is no drug that has been approved for the treatment of transplant-associated TMA in the United States. The group in Cincinnati has pioneering and very effective data showing that ecolusumab, which is an inhibitor of complement activation that does not go through the lectin pathway, has been effective in the treatment of transplant-associated TMA in children primarily. The results in adults have not been as promising, but again, it suggests that transplant-associated TMA in children might have more, uh, might have a different pathway than transplant-associated TMA in adults. The narsoplumab um, data that was provided by Rambaldi et al. suggests that maybe the lectin pathway may also be involved in this transplant-associated TMA. I think as we move forward, we are going to see that one, there will be more awareness of transplant-associated TMA. Two, we will be looking more at markers of complement activation, such as CH50, C5B9. And three, that many of us will be participating in collaborative trials of either narsoplumab or ecolusumab or other complement inhibitors to be able to prevent this devastating complication of allogeneic transplant. Actually, most of the experience with transplant-associated TMA and a lot of the, uh, what we've learned from transplant-associated TMA has emerged from the group in Cincinnati, Stella Davis, uh, uh, Sonata Giondelli, and Chris Dunley. And what they've done is they've shown, you know, when they look for transplant-associated TMA, they actually see it in 30% of the patients, of which a third can have severe transplant-associated TMA. They also have very clear algorithms for the use of complement inhibition, and they actually monitor complement activation throughout the transplant course. And this um, um, has resulted in their reporting the beneficial effects on nicolucimab as treatment for transplant-associated TMA. Similar results have not been observed in adults, although there are cases that have responded to nicolucimab. Is transplant-associated TMA more common in children and adults? The reality is we don't know. Prospective trials are now currently being performed to get a better handle. One of the problems is that schistocytosis, which is a hallmark of thrombotic microangiopathy, 
is not a very trustworthy test. I mean, you can get the same slide being read by different people and different number of schistocytes. 